Writing proofs in math takes a lot of time and effort to get good at, but it's really rewarding because when you can figure out a proof on your own, you feel really accomplished. This is a wonderful math book that I have reviewed in the past. It's called Mathematical Proofs, A Transition to Advanced Mathematics, and this is written by Chartrand, Palomini, and Zhang. My copy smells really good. I'm just gonna give it a whiff. Ah, nice. My copy is also used. It even says it right there, used. And it's fairly thin. It's like a really thin book. But don't let the thinness of this book fool you. This book actually contains a lot of topics that you won't find in other proof writing books. In this video, we're briefly going to go over this book and then we're going to prove the strong form of mathematical induction. So the strong form of induction is a theorem that you can use to prove other statements and it's equivalent to something called the well ordering principle. So we're gonna use that to help prove it later in this video. I really like the contents of this book. It's got really nice topics. A lot of them are very standard. For example, here you have sets, logic, and then direct proof and proof by contrapositive. Then more on that. Proof by contradiction, prove or disprove. Those are always quite challenging. Equivalence relations, a super important topic. Functions, again, super key. Mathematical induction, that's what we're gonna be focusing on later in this video. Cardinalities, cardinalities of sets, proofs in number theory, proofs in calculus, proofs in group theory. So you see there's a lot of unique topics in this book. And this book does have answers and hints to selected odd numbered exercises. And by answers and hints, they actually mean proofs. So it's a really good book for learning to write proofs because you are getting quite a bit. I mean, look at all of these little proof sketches and proofs and answers that you get in the back. This is one of my favorite books on proof writing. And there's other really good books on proof writing, but again, this is just one that I really like. And so I thought I would just share it again in this video before we do this really, really delicate proof. So this is the strong form of induction in the book. I'm going to state it slightly differently, but it's pretty much the same. And down here, he talks about how he doesn't prove it. He says, the proof of theorem 9.18 is very similar to the proof of theorem 9.5. And so it is not included here. And it mentions that the strong form of induction is equivalent to the well-ordering principle. So we're going to assume that the well-ordering principle is true. We're basically going to take it as an axiom and then we're going to prove this very delicate argument. Okay, proof time. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And if you don't understand everything in the proof, you know, don't feel bad. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work to get good at this stuff and it takes a lot of effort to understand proofs like this. All right, so we are going to prove that well ordering implies the strong form of mathematical induction. So well ordering is an axiom that says that every non-empty set of natural numbers has a least element. By the natural numbers here, we mean specifically the set of all numbers of the form 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It's important to make the distinction because oftentimes 0 is not considered a natural number. So we're going to assume that well ordering is true and then we're going to prove that strong induction actually works. Let's go ahead and read the statement together. Suppose that for each natural number n, we are given a statement s of n, and that we can prove the following two properties. One, the statement s of zero is true. Two, for each positive integer n, if s of k is true, for every integer k with this condition here, then s of n is true. This is basically saying for every positive integer n, if our statement is true for all integers that are smaller than n between zero and you know strictly less than n, so you do include zero, then the statement is true at n. If both of these conditions hold, then our statement is true for all integers n greater than or equal to zero. So we have to prove this because we're proving this statement here so we're basically going to assume both of these things and then try to show this is true. And we're going to use well-ordering, also known as the well-ordering principle, in order to do that. So it takes a bit of work to even just understand the statement of the problem. So proof. I'll try to go slowly and hopefully some of this uh, will make sense. 
So our goal is to show that this statement is true. We're going to go ahead and just say, we're assuming these are true. So we have both of these conditions and they're true. And we have to prove this. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm gonna let T be the set of all, so of all non-negative integers, so all integers greater than or equal to zero. So I'll just say the set of all integers, could have said non-negative, but I'm just gonna do this, greater than or equal to zero, for which the statement is false, which the statement is false, okay? And we shouldn't have any of these, right? Because we're trying to show our statement is true for all integers n greater than or equal to zero. We're saying t is the set of all integers greater than or equal to zero for which the statement is false. So obviously we need the set to be empty and that's going to be our claim. The claim is that t is the empty set. Because if this set is empty, then there are no integers greater than or equal to zero for which the statement is false. Therefore it's true for all integers greater than or equal to zero. To show it's empty, we're going to proceed by a proof by contradiction. So I will say, suppose to the contrary that T is not the empty set. So let's think about what that means. If it's not the empty set, well, that means it has an element. But more importantly than that, it has a very specific element. T is a set of natural numbers, and well ordering tells us that every non-empty set, of which T is, of natural numbers, of which it is, has a least element. So then, by well ordering, T has a least element. T has a least element say, let's just call it, um, I'm gonna call it n sub zero, n not in t. So n not is in t, let's think about what that means. That means that the statement is false at n not. That means s of n not is false. Okay, something to keep in mind. So now we somehow have to use, you know, our hypothesis here. We haven't used any of these conditions here in this actual proof. So first note that it can't be zero because it would violate the first condition. We know that n naught is in t, that means our statement is false at n naught. If n naught was zero, it would be true by condition one. So note, n naught is not equal to zero by one. And so what that basically means is that it's a number bigger than zero. Right, it's a number bigger than zero, so it's the least element, and it's bigger than zero. And also notice, n naught is in t. t is the set of all integers for which the statement is false. It's the smallest integer for which the statement is false. Therefore, the statement is true for all integers smaller than n naught. And for every integer, let's call those integers k. So for every integer k, that is smaller than n naught. So we'll write that as saying with zero less than or equal to k less than n naught, the statement s of k is true. Let's pause here for a moment and realize that this was actually necessary to write this down. Because if n0 is zero, I'm just gonna come over here to the side and look what happens here. You get this. So you have a number k here. I mean, and so k is a number and it must exist and it's between zero and zero. It doesn't make any sense. So you do need this condition to even write this down. So what do we have here? We have for every integer k with this condition, the statement s sub k is true. And n naught, n naught is a positive integer because it's not zero, so n naught is positive. So n naught is a positive integer, and we know that for every integer k with this condition, we have that being true, and we have that here, right? For every integer k 
with this condition, the statement is true. It's exactly what it says up here in the hypothesis, right? The statement is true for all integers k with this condition. Thus by two, s sub n naught is true. This is a contradiction, right? Because n naught is in t. And because it's in t, s sub n naught is false. Contradicting that n naught is in t. Thus, this set cannot be empty. So thus, or rather, <laughs> this set is not equal to the empty set. So thus, t is the empty set. Therefore, again, t was the set of all integers greater than or equal to zero for which the statement is false. t is the empty set. There are no such integers. So s sub n must be true for all integers n greater than or equal to zero. And that completes the proof. So, very delicate proof. Um, I said a lot in words that I didn't write. Uh, for example, it's important to note that this implies a couple things. One, you can write this down, and two, n naught is a positive integer, so you can use condition two and invoke this statement here, which leads to a contradiction. So, um, kind of a nice problem, um, and this is something you'd probably see in you know most books. On, um, that cover proof writing and mathematical induction. So I thought it would be a good example of a very delicate proof. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've learned something. I will try to leave a link in the description to this book in case you're interested in picking it up. I think it's a really good choice for proof writing. And while there are other good proof writing books, I thought that this one would be an exceptionally good choice for anyone who wants to get started. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.